Hey everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a holiday themed anti-haul. I'm being very harsh. Sorry if this offends you. These are my opinions. I'm not trying to offend anyone. I probably should have put that at the beginning. So if you've never heard of an anti-haul before, it's exactly the opposite of regular haul you might see on the internet. So a haul normally shows off things that you bought. An anti-haul is things that you are going to explain and talk about that you would not buy and in my case also encourage you not to buy. So I think these started in like the beauty blogger niche, but now they've kind of expanded to all the other niches. So I thought this would be kind of fun to talk about some of the wasteful things that happen during the holidays and things that I personally don't buy or participate in and things that I really encourage you also not to participate in. So for other people in the zero waste movement, anti hauls are specifically focused on mostly plastic things, but specifically things that just have little to no purpose. They are used for a short amount of time and then they are just thrown away and obviously they're really wasteful. In addition to just talking about the wasteful things, I am also going to outline some ways to help you avoid these wasteful trends and traditions. And if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I asked in my story on my recent post, wasteful things that you guys hate about the holidays. So I'm going to be featuring some of those as well. So let's just jump right in. The first thing I have to talk about is wrapping paper, and wrapping paper is actually very wasteful. It's just made out of a material that's not recyclable. It's kind of like paper covered in like wax or plastic, or it might just be plastic in general, I've seen some like that. And most people are, one, very violent when they open the gifts and the stuff can't be reused, and two, that type of material just can't be recycled. So instead of traditional wrapping paper, you could opt for a more eco-friendly option, but here are a couple ideas. You can use newspaper, scraps of cloth, even reusable bags and towels, stuff that can be repurposed once the person opens the gift, and even scarves. Scarves would be a great option as well. Next are those kind of halfway pre-made gingerbread house kits that you can find at the store. I used to do these all the time as a kid, and I don't remember a single time that they actually worked out. These things are just so wasteful because one, they come in plastic, and two, they usually don't even look good or taste good. So I remember growing up, these things were they tasted like cardboard, they were flavorless, like you couldn't even eat them if you wanted to, they were so hard sometimes. And also, they come in like literally so much plastic, the box is plastic, there's instructions which are wasteful, it comes with icing, and all these separate candies in little individual bags, none of this stuff can be recycled. And I get that it's very convenient if you have kids and it's a lot easier than making stuff, but just keep in mind that they are very wasteful. And honestly, the, like I only remember doing it one time and that was when I was like, early teens like I was pretty old I was like not a kid so honestly kids aren't even gonna remember if you do them or not. one option would obviously be to make your own gingerbread house and you can make this as intricate as you want which is really cool you can literally just bake some squares and have your kids glue those together with icing or you can make it with windows and doors and all this really cool stuff and you can involve your kids in the whole process make a whole day out of it start a new tradition that way or something a lot simpler is to just buy graham crackers and icing and make gingerbread houses or other structures like that. That is very simple, a lot less waste. So the next item I am anti-hauling is plastic bows. They're cute for five minutes once you like see the gift and maybe take a cute photo of it. But beyond that, they are just so wasteful. You can maybe use it a couple times if you either are very careful with it or you put tape on it. But once it gets done being used, it has to be thrown away, it can't be recycled. And there's not even a use for it other than just to look cute. There are a couple options you can use if you are still one of the people who uses plastic bows, and one of them is to just not use them anymore. It's it's that simple. You literally just don't have to buy them. It'll save you money. They're like probably $5 a piece. Or you can make something homemade. You make something out of recyclable or compostable material, something like tissue paper, newspaper, old paper from books, toilet paper, tube like you can cut those into little rings and turn them into flowers you can use twine there are so many other options that are so much better for the environment and then it's homemade and it looks really nice so i'm also anti-hauling individually wrapped cookies and candies i think this happens a lot during christmas as well with different cookies and stuff like that you'll get the entire pack of them and then in like the row of cookies each cookie in the row is individually wrapped as well and it is so much plastic so much waste so of course it is really hard to tell if you're buying a new item like something you've never bought before and you just don't know if they're individually wrapped or not so obviously what you can do there is just not buy that brand again try to find a different brand and of course the best option during the holidays is to just make cookies and stuff yourself to avoid all the plastic waste to begin with if you do have to buy stuff pre-made try to find brands that you know are individually wrapped 
I think one of the things that bothers me the most about Christmas and one of the things I am anti-hauling is Christmas cards. I think we did one actual one my entire life growing up, but I've never even had the desire to make one since transitioning to a low waist lifestyle. Yeah, they're cute. They are fun to hang on the fridge for a few weeks, but then what do you do with them after that? I'm sure everyone just throws them away. Just imagining how many Christmas cards are sent out every year just end up probably in the trash. I would guess that not even half of them get recycled. It's probably very few of them that actually get recycled. They probably all get thrown away. And just thinking about how much, how many trees were wasted and how much postage was wasted and how much emissions it cost to ship them somewhere and all the ink and all that, all the stuff going into it, a complete waste. It was hung on someone's fridge for a few weeks and then thrown in the garbage. Not to mention, it's very wasteful money-wise for people creating them because some people probably get professional photos taken, so that's cost. It also costs money to order them and ship them to your house, and it also costs money to send them with a stamp in the mail. And also, that's a lot of emissions waste as well. The trees being turned into paper, the paper being processed into the card, being shipped to your house, and then being shipped to the recipient's house. I think Christmas cards in general are just extremely wasteful. But the good news is there are a lot of eco-friendly ways that you can get around this and you can still partake in this Christmas tradition because I know a lot of people really do love it. It is really special to kind of get nice outfits with your family and take a photo and send it to everyone else. So option one, if you still want the paper ones, okay, I guess but maybe try to hand deliver them instead. At least hand deliver as many as you can, because I know for me, like, obviously I live in Japan, I can't have my family just hand deliver me their Christmas cards if they wanted to. It might not be as special to you, but it saves a lot of money and a lot of emissions. And then I have two other ideas that are both way more environmentally friendly, and one of those ideas is to make an e-card. You can do this, but there are apps like Canva, it's a free, like, graphic design app, anybody can use it. You can upload any photo of your family that you want in there, add any graphics, any text that you want, and then you can either email it or text it to whoever you want to send it to, or you can even just blast it on Facebook and other social media for everyone to see. And then something a little more unique and something that we did last year, and if you're into videography, is you can make a little Christmas video. So what we did last year, we just drove to a beach, we were in sweaters and Santa hats, it was really hot. <laughs> And we did sand angels and we thought that was really funny because everyone back home was like in two feet of snow and we were making sand angels on the beach so and it was a cute little Christmas message from us to everyone else on Christmas for very little waste. So I know I said the other one really bothered me but I think this one bothers me the most. I'm, I'm getting very mad just talking about this so prepare for a rant. And the thing that I hate the most about Christmas and Christmas traditions is brand new ugly sweaters. So if you don't know where the tradition started I guess I don't really know either. I'm just assuming that this tradition started with people wanting to have a legitimately ugly Christmas sweater party and they would go to their grandma or their aunt or their mom and be like, hey, give me your ugliest sweater and they would wear that. It didn't even have to be a Christmas themed sweater. It just had to be a straight up ugly sweater. And this trend has gotten twisted over the past few years or decades. But instead of doing that, most people will just go to a store, an outlet like Target or something, and buy a brand new sweater that's not even ugly. I think that's what blows my mind the most. Like not, not the fact that there are companies making brand new sweaters every year, that's annoying, but what's even more annoying is it's not even ugly anymore. They're actually like cute, like stripes and polka dots and little elves and, and puns and stuff. It just doesn't make sense to me. So this is just extremely wasteful because these sweaters are being created every single year from raw materials, probably made with synthetic materials, and people buy brand new sweaters every year. So these sweaters are being mass produced every year for very cheap cost, which means they probably had child labor involved, and they're made of synthetic materials. So when the materials are being washed and processed and stuff, it takes a lot of emissions, one, to process these sweaters every single year, and then when you wash them, microplastics are being released into the water. All that to say, this tradition is terrible. The okay. This tradition isn't terrible. It is just such a wasteful tradition now. So there are a few things you can do. One, surely you already have some of these brand new cute ugly sweaters. You can just reuse those. If you like them, please do not buy brand new sweater every year just to wear to an ugly Christmas sweater party or something like that. So reuse what you already have. Option two is to actually go find an ugly sweater from your mom or your grandma or your aunt or whoever. Kind of how the tradition started. Just ask around, find someone who has an actual ugly sweater. It doesn't even have to actually be ugly because apparently that's not the trend anymore. The trend is to now call it ugly even though it's cute. Option three is to thrift it. You can actually go to a thrift store or you can look on online thrift shops or you can even go to vintage stores and find really cool old vintage sweaters. 
But thrifting is just a great way to find a sweater that's brand new to you, that doesn't require any new resources to create, and you can actually find one that's cute or ugly, whatever you want. I'm anti-hauling ugly Christmas sweaters. They drive me nuts, obviously. So another thing I hate and that I'm anti-hauling is random junk in stockings and also white elephant. I'm just gonna tie them all into the same thing. So I just wanna point out that I think stockings are fun, I think white elephant's fun, I think Secret Santa's fun. It's all fun. But what's not fun is all of the junk associated with it. I, I don't think this happens as much with stocking stuffers, but with like white elephant and Secret Santa this can happen. So you just buy some random piece of garbage that you get from the dollar store or you find on Amazon. And then it might be funny during the party, during the gathering, but it, then it's gonna be thrown away. That object that you got that's junk was literally created to be thrown into the garbage. And that's just so sad. Don't purchase them if you know the person's not gonna buy them. That's what I'm trying to say. The one time I actually did Secret Santa, I don't even remember what I gave. So that probably just tells you that I just gave junk. So this, this was like probably four years ago. And some of those gifts were just so wasteful. They made me mad even before I was conscious about my waste. I remember one of them being a bedpan and one of them being one of those little tiny like eight by eight VHS players it had a tiny little screen. Who's gonna use that junk? Nobody. It's gonna be lucky if it gets repurposed or donated, but it's probably just gonna end up in the landfill. All this to say, please avoid junk during your family Christmas game and giving stuff in stockings. I just hope this year you're thinking a little bit more consciously about the gifts that you're giving, even if it's during a game like White Elephant or Secret Santa. Okay, so I've talked long enough about that. You get it, don't buy junk for these things. Here's what you can do instead. Obviously, you know the person you're getting Secret Santa gifts for, and if you don't know them, find someone who does know them. Say for instance, you do it at work with your coworkers and you're not really good friends with the person you're giving it for, find someone who is their friend and ask, hey, what does this person like? So you can actually buy stuff that they'll use and want. White Elephant, try not to buy stupid gag gifts and junk. Try to find something useful. It's also just part of the game that you get a gift that's a surprise to you. You can get something nice and meaningful, like a mug with like hot chocolate mix, and then same with stockings, especially with kids. Try not to get them junk, try to get them things that they'll actually use, like crayons or socks or candy, their favorite candy, and their little things that they actually need. I talked way too long about that just to tell you, don't buy junk, buy things people actually need and want. The next thing I'm anti-hauling is advent calendars and specifically modern advent calendars. I think the origin is very special if you want to do something a little more traditional or even make something yourself. For example, I've seen a lot of people on Instagram um, personally make things for their significant other or for their kids. They either put things in little envelopes or little boxes or whatever and then your kid or significant other gets to open one thing every day. I think that's really cool. But I really hate the ones that are prepackaged from the store because they seem to just be in plastic. I don't know if the things inside actually even taste good. They're just very wasteful. I'm gonna tell you about the craziest thing I've seen this holiday season yet. It was perfect that like during the break while the jets were flying, I saw this on Instagram. I saw someone got an advent calendar for their dogs. I was just absolutely shocked. Advent is the season leading up to Christmas where you celebrate and prepare and get ready for the holiday. Dogs don't need to do that. <laughs> It would just make me very frustrated that they bought something so wasteful, this plastic, with just dog treats in it. When you can just go buy a cardboard box of dog treats that can be recycled and you can give your dog a treat from December 1st to December 25th out of a box instead of this cute, cute, it's not cute. There was just so many other options this person could have done. <sighs> But instead they went with the very cheap, very wasteful doggy advent calendar and that just drove me nuts. So I already kind of tied in some other things that you can do to make your own advent calendars and still celebrate the advent season without being so wasteful. The last thing that I'm anti-hauling is new vintage decor. So in preparation for this video, I was looking up like Christmas trends and when I googled that, up came like literally 2019 Christmas trends and I'm like, what? I personally have never been one to fall for trends and like even growing up, we had the same Christmas decoration every year. I'm sure my mom still puts it up, the same stuff from like 1999. Like <laughs> it's just all so special to us that we don't want to change our decoration every year. But there are literally people out there who buy brand new decoration every year. So the trend this year apparently is like vintage and natural looking stuff. One of the most common things I saw was like placemats, but it was like a sliver of a log. Pine cones, pine needles, that kind of stuff is really trending right now. And that's fine if you go out 
and find those stuff that are actually real. But what I think is absolutely ridiculous and what I'm anti-hauling is that people are buying natural materials that are made out of plastic from some big home goods retailer that they probably made a thousand different like copies of them and a thousand people are gonna have it in their home. They're not even gonna be unique. And then the same with vintage. Vintage looking stockings and vintage looking sweaters. When in reality, these things were probably made two months ago to fit the trend. They're absolutely brand new, but they're made to look vintage. That just drives me absolutely nuts because there are things still out there in vintage shops and thrift shops that are actually truly vintage that you can get without being so wasteful, but instead people are buying brand new items that are just made to look vintage and made to look natural. So that's all the things that I'm anti-hauling, but I do wanna to touch a little bit more on trends. So I already kind of talked about it. It just, it's very frustrating to see that decor changes every year and every season and the Christmas, the colors of Christmas change every year. Like it just bothers me so much. The trends for Christmas change each year. The trends for clothes change each year, each season, sometimes even each week. But it just bothers me how wasteful it is. I personally don't know anybody who does it, but I do know there are people out there who literally go and buy brand new Christmas decor every year to fit the trends. And they probably, I like to think that they donate their old stuff, but I know that most people don't because they're too lazy and they just throw it out. They use stuff for like three weeks a year, put it in boxes, let it take up space in their house just for them to throw it out the next year so they can fit the new trend. And it just makes me very sad. People were forced to make this stuff. It was shipped probably halfway across the world for you to use it for a few days and then throw it away. I think that's just something, something that we really need to think about this holiday season and of course all year round. The moral of the story is try not to be so wasteful this holiday season. If you wanna see some fun ways to make your own holiday decor, be sure to check out this video right here and I show you how to upcycle some things that you probably already have in your house and a cute holiday decor, which you can match to the trends if you want, but you can make it yourself instead of buying something brand new. And just try to find ways to do that throughout the holiday season and of course throughout the rest of the year. Find things that you can make yourself, make your own food, make your own decor, reuse things you already have, thrift and things if you need something new. Just try to have a less wasteful holiday season. I'm sure as you've seen by now, I've seen it all over the internet, Americans waste 25% more between Thanksgiving and Christmas than they do the rest of the year. And that's just something I think is very important for every single one of us to keep in mind is to just be a little bit more mindful, a little bit more conscious about what we're making, what we're consuming during the holiday season and try to prevent a little more waste. That's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed me ranting about wasteful holiday trends and traditions. If you like anti-hauls, give this video a thumbs up. I'd love to do more of them. I love ranting and expressing my opinions and views about the wasteful world that we live in. This was actually a lot of fun to film. Let us know about other wasteful things you hate during the holiday season. And until next time, remember that the little changes you make have a big impact in the long run and have a happy holiday season. I would, I would say, oh my gosh. If you still really want the paper ones, fine. <laughs> I don't know how you can do this actually. Ugh, I'm getting so worked up. Trendiness and what's the other word? Like when you want to be stylish. Tradition, trend, ah, trendy, yeah, trendy. So what we've done with this tradition is just completely turn it around and it is just such a wasteful tradition. Well, I really stuttered. Especially when your sweaters aren't ugly. <laughs> I like how that makes me the most mad, not the wastefulness. Option two. You can go find an actual ugly sweater from your mom or your grandma or your aunt or... Thanks a lot, construction workers. I almost said white Santa with secret elephant. <laughs> that would have been amazing.